What is up, my people? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your boy, Nassim the, the Dream, and we are continuing on with the annual NTD Awards, and I will be issuing my top five movies of 2022. So this is going to be the last video I make for fun when it comes to the NTD Awards. Everything so on will actually be towards the music niche that I promote on this channel. So without further ado, I'm just going to dive in right into this list at the number five spot. I'm going to have to hand it to A24's... <laughs> Pearl. Pearl is the prequel to the highly successful slasher movie that also came out this year, X, and it stars Mia Goth as Pearl, a young woman grown up in an isolated farm with strict German integrated parents, whom is a girl that deeply desires to be seen in film, and is also directed by Ty West. Now, this is obviously a really tough pick if you've seen both of these films, the pick Pearl or X, and I really do think overall X has the best horror slasher vibes to it and overall aesthetic. But the thing that really had me captivated with Pearl is just the overall cinematography and the new sketch way that they went with the filtering. But on top of visually what I was really enjoying more from Pearl, what really put Pearl over X for me hands down was Mia Goth. I think it's been said well enough from people that have seen the film and are familiar with Mia Goth's work. This is without a doubt a performance that is a must to be recognized in the Academy. Mia Goth really does carry this film on her shoulders with not really that much included support from the other performers on here, which I'm not shitting on them. They actually did a really good job, but I feel like they had more involvement when it comes to X. But with Pearl, Mia Goth was the reason why Pearl is an absolute must-see, especially if you enjoy the X film. Not only does X really capitalize at something that just feels so unique when it comes to the slasher genre, but Pearl really capitalizes about what that film really did, and especially about more that you really want to know of what really created Pearl the murderer in X. But she was just an absolute joy in here. Sometimes it, there were just moments where she was really going about that just really had me you know, like, uh, just, like biting under my nails and, you know, just really had me like going, really had me going intense. And she just just a phenomenal work on here. This movie is absolutely amazing. Number four, we're going to continue with the horror vibes. I'm going to be awarding the number four spot to. This is perfectly natural. Barbarian. Barbarian is a thriller horror movie about a young woman booking an Airbnb in a mysterious neighborhood in Detroit to seek a job opportunity while soon discovering there is much more to fear than an unexpected house guest. This film stars Georgia Campbell while also featuring actors Bill Skarsgård and Justin Long and is directed by Zach Krieger. So to pick a horror movie that really tops the rest that I've seen all year was really really tough especially when really talking about the movie I just talked about Pearl, X, etc. But the thing I really love the Barbarian is just how unpredictable some things really stand out there's so many things that they try to build on early to the movie about what could really be happening in this house they really really lead you on to something and it's about to be like kind of cliche about a little bit too predictable it's like this can't be right there's got to be something more deeper with so what's actually going on with this it, it was insane what they actually planted what is actually going on and the horrors in this house i thought georgia campbell was absolutely amazing in this film as well as bill skarsgård as there's just so many creepy vibes from him but what a horror movie really wants to do and what it aims to really do for the audience i think this movie really excelled more than others because of the incredible unpredictable factor that it really tries to bring on with its narrative and twists and not only that just some of the things that can really just they're just disturbing. There are some moments that are a little bit goofy in this movie, but I thought overall the movie was just fantastic, and it's probably my favorite horror movie of the year. And then we're going to move on to my number three spot, which is easily one of the most memorable spots on here. A movie that I think is a guaranteed great watch, especially if you're into this man's films. And of course, I am talking about the third movie from the man himself, Jordan Peele's... Nope is the third written and directed thriller from Jordan Peele and stars David Kalua and Kiki Palmer taking place from their California ranch and the synopsis goes out with this brother and sister relationship aiming to make a living while also aiming to make it big in Hollywood when they discover something sinister occurring in the sky. Now Jordan Peele it's just been an absolute stud when it comes to what he's just already been creating with these already three films that have just been absolutely outstanding and some of the best thriller horror movies you can ever watch. But I think without a doubt, Nope is just the absolute steal for all three of these movies in considered. And like I mentioned, they're all absolutely 
phenomenal, but this one just takes the cake. David Kalua is much more memorizing than he was in Get Out. Kiki Palmer is just such a bright light and just a character that just brings in so much entertainment. There's just so much personality that's feeding off this character. It's one of the best developments in all of his films. And I think what really made this film stand out the most is that well, you're trying to really figure out what's really going on with this whole UFO situation, and then it's finally uncovered. It's it's freaking it's terrifying it's somewhat easy to figure out how to defeat a slasher it's just one person it's a killer usually they're not fucking michael myers and without sporing barbarian it's also a little bit somewhat simple to beat the the villain in this movie but in nope what do you do? That was the thing that really had me on the edge of my seat the entire watch through. But I would say that David Kalua and Kiki Palmer were just something that were just so fresh and new for this movie. And especially if you're being familiar with their work and especially being familiar with Get Out, you really wonder like, man, how are you pulling this off? This is fantastic. Jordan Peele, how are you doing this? How are you doing this, dude? Everything he touches just turns into gold, man. In terms of fundamental work of what really goes into a movie, the performances, as far as the cinematography, narrative, and writing, have all reached a level that I think is at least pretty great. But there's certain moments on here, especially with the writing and just performances overall, that really reach top notch. Steven Yoon is also one of the greatest performances on here as well. But I think hands down, considering how mind-boggling it is, how Get Out and Us are already great horror films, horror thrillers from Jordan Peele, it's not even a competition to me that nope is the best one out of the three moving on to the number two spot a movie that i really feel like is so underrated so underappreciated and shockingly mind-boggling not too many people have even seen this yet and i just gotta say to that viewer you're tweaking that movie hands down goes to <laughs> Black Panthers. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is the second movie to the Black Panther story as well as the final film in Marvel's Phase 4. The film stars Latita Wright as Sherry with breakout supporting roles such as Angela Basket as Queen Ramonda, Winston Duke as M'Baku, Denai Guerrero as Okoye, and with our protagonist in the film Tenochtitl Hereta as Namor the Submariner. Now I think all the Marvel fans are especially know why this movie was going to be such a difficult watch and not to mention like the heights that it really needed to reach because of the tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman. No one knew necessarily where the direction was gonna go, and especially with the comic book nerds knowing about what we're supposed to be reaching in phase six going into Secret Wars, how are we gonna do that now? And I get that's why they had a lot of people discouraged because you know Chadwick Boseman was he really was T'Challa. He, the, he had such a special connection with the Black Panther character that so many people were mesmerized by, they were so connected with. You know, it, it, it was seriously a blow to the heart. And it really made sense about why people were just like, you know, you can't, you feel like you can't really move on. And I get why some people just really thought the Black Panther story should just end right here. But I think the man who really needs to be credited is the director, Ryan Coogler, especially because when he finished the script, that's when they found out about the tragic news of Chadwick Boseman's death. That's when he had to start rewriting the entire script. The fact that you find that out right there and you have to rewrite the script while you're grieving and this is what you make the skill and talent and dedication to making such an emotional packful and just absolutely upcoming film like this is hands down incredible there's no arguing with the amount of talent ryan coogler possesses because he already did so well with the first black panther film and what he does with this one it's just, it, it's incredible. Y'all need to respect Latita Wright. Put some respect on Latita Wright's name. The size of the shoes that she had to fill for this movie, no one could do it. I don't want to hear all the bullshit that people were saying, why don't you just recast Michael B. Jordan? No, he fucking died. It wouldn't make sense for Killmonger to come back from the dead to make him Black Panther. That is just lazy writing. And it's also a disservice to what Chadwick Boseman did for the character. No, they did the best thing that they really could for this film. And I really thought that there was no other better way 
that Ryan Cooler could have really approached this because, man, everything that he really did with this film, everybody in this film, scene by scene, stepped to the plate. The moments that were emotional, the moments that were exciting with its action sequences, and the moments that just had you filled in with more deeper dialogue when it comes to understanding the story and understanding these new characters that were being introduced, such as Namor and the Atlanteans, or I guess they're not necessarily called the Atlanteans. There is zero argument to say that the work that put into this film wasn't absolutely top notch. It's it's one of the better films that ever come out in this entire year. Some of the better films that ever even came out in the MCU. They at least had comic book background to really make this story relevant and continuous of what they're really trying to do in the future of the MCU. And I think this movie was just, it, it felt impossible to really continue on with. And it kind of really felt like that. And there was just moments that it just felt like where emotion was really being displayed, especially from Angela Bassett, Latita Wright. It, it felt so real and it pierced my soul. I burst out crying in that theater, man. And I felt the emotion, everyone laughing, everyone being sad. It felt like... It really felt like a true family witnessing what they've been waiting for and the heartbreaking but beautiful tribute that this movie was to the great Chadwick Boseman. I love this movie. It's easily one of the best Marvel movies ever made. And, you know, I wish the circumstances were different because it's unfortunate. But what, what they did with this film due to the circumstances, uh, they, they couldn't have done any better. They, they did their best and it shows. Ladies and gentlemen... We are at the number one spot. Now, this is not only my number one movie in 2022. This is a movie that has touched me on such a personal level that I had no choice but to crown this movie after watching it so many times as my favorite movie of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, I crown the number one spot to the great and powerful A24 phenomenon. Every rejection, every disappointment has led you here to this moment. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Everything Everywhere All at Once stars Evelyn Wang, played by Michelle Yu, alongside with her family that plays a huge role in this film. Kei Hu Kwan as Wayman Wang, James Hong as Gong Gong, Stephanie Su as Joy Wang, and in my opinion, one of the best supporting candidates in 2022. Jamie Lee Curtis. This is a film about interdimensional rapture unraveling reality and it is all up to our lead Evelyn Wang to save the multiverse. What they really go with imagery wise of what they want this movie to represent, they go about by explaining it as an everything bagel. The themes and tropes and overall ideas that they try to build into this everything bagel concept, you're at a loss for words about how a movie like this can even exist. Fundamentally, this movie just excels in the best way possible. Performance-wise, Michelle Yu and Kei Kwan were absolute standouts. And like I said, Jamie Lee Curtis is one of the best candidates as female supporting actresses of 2022. I would be shocked if she didn't win this year. Not to mention, I would just be shocked if this movie in general did not sweep the Academy because Michelle Yu really stepped up to the plate on here and showed what she can really do shows how talented she really is. There's just so many things that this movie dives into and there's just so many different ways that this movie approaches and how it's trying to demonstrate what it's really trying to get at. It's just incredible. It's incredible. I have never seen such obnoxious humor in a movie like this. It's, it's unimaginable about how much work that they really try to put in here, especially when thinking about all the practical effects that go into this movie because there are just so many shots that I knew that they were there probably for hours shooting. I will say this movie isn't probably for everybody, but I will also say that this is a movie that you just cannot miss, that you must, and I mean must try. There was moments that really had me in my feels during this movie, and it's, it's an incredible two hours and 20 minutes of just great writing, great character development, and just a powerful theme hitting at the very end. It's an incredible watch. I think this is a movie that should be acknowledged by everybody. It's one of those movies that I think should have as much hype as like movies like Shawshank Redemption, which is like a movie that almost everybody has heard of. How the Daniels approach the direction of this movie and just thinking about what they actually seen in these performers, it's incredible of what they actually brought off of them because I really think that this movie 
did something so big for each of these performers that they're gonna be ass non-stop now for roles. This movie has everything that you could ever love into it in terms of a genre, a comedy, an action movie. The sequences, what they do with the scenes on here are absolutely amazing. The cinematography is just bonkers what they do when it comes to widescreen going in full screen. It's just absolutely outlandish. What this movie does to pay homage to kung fu movies and their appreciation from the Daniels movies, it's just so satisfying and it's just so pure and genuine. It is without a doubt the best movie i've ever seen ever in my life the one movie i recommend anybody to see because it deserves the acknowledgement it deserves the watch and i can guarantee you you'll at least like the movie but i would be surprised if you didn't love it and guys that is my top five movies of 2022 guys let me know down in the comments below what were some of your favorite movies that you watched this year let me know what you thought about my list did you love these movies that i named did you hate them let me know in the comments down below i appreciate you guys so much don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel i appreciate it so much stay tuned for the rest of the ntd awards as i will be coming out with the next video that will be about my top five scores of 2022. Stay in tune for that. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Deuce.